project, we're going to create a display of guitar chords with, some, with an image and several buttons. And I can click on a button and see, in this case, the chord for an A and hear it play. A minor, B7, C, D, D minor, B7, F, G, G7, and this play button simply replays the last chord. So in this first part of the project, we're going to look at how to lay this out using stack views. And then the second part, we'll add in the audio. So if we think about a stack view, we can do a vertical stack view with the label being uh, the first object, the image being the second, and then each row of these buttons would be a horizontal stack view. So we'd end up with six objects in our vertical stack view, and then each of these four horizontals will have three, three button views, which we'll use a background um, that I've created, and we'll add some text uh, to those buttons. So that's how we're gonna lay this out. Let's go ahead and do it. I've set up a new project as a single view app uh, for iOS. I've named it 09B Guitar Chords. And I've created some graphics in Photoshop that I want to bring into my project. So I'm going to go to the Assets. I'm going to go into Finder and select all the images that I want to bring in. And I'm just going to drag them into my project. When it imports the files, Xcode uh, creates an image asset for each grouping of files. And I have the 1x, 2x, and 3x that I've created in Photoshop. We can look at any individual one of these and see the three images. So that's our assets. We're going to go to the storyboard and begin to lay this out. I'm going to turn on the preview. And I'm designing this for an iPhone 8. I'm going to go ahead and set my simulator for iPhone 8. And at this point, I'm going to hide the navigation panel. Okay, I'm going to start with a stack view. And we want to use a vertical stack view. And drag it onto my storyboard. I'm going to set some constraints for the stack view. And we're going to look at the safe area. Set a constraint on the left or leading side of zero zero on the right hand side and then for the top to the safe area I'm going to go 22 and then 25 at the bottom and I'll add those four constraints I'm going to set up some properties for this stack view I want the alignment to be centered and we'll use equal spacing for our distribution. Then I'm going to add a horizontal stack view. And the constraints for this stack view is I'm going to set this up as being tied to the top stack view, zero. And I'll come in 10 pixels to the left and right this is also going to be in relative to that first stack view. I'm not going to anchor the bottom, and I'll add those three constraints. I'm going to copy that stack view and paste it two more times. I'm going to paste it and get um, six horizontal stack views. I'm going to select all six of those and we're going to set up a constraint that these will be equal widths and equal heights. And there you can see our various constraints. I'm going to take this second one. Like, let's go ahead and name these just to keep things straight. So I'm going to say stack view A stack view B, C, and so forth. I'm going to take stack view B. 
We're going to go into the constraints for that. And for our equal height, we're going to set this proportional so that it occupies four times the height. This is going to be our image. I'm also going to set up the width for this constraint to make it proportional. And we'll set it at 0 0.7. I'm going to go to Stack View A. In the Stack View A, I'm going to add a label. I'm going to set the text to be beginning guitar chords. I'm going to change the font. I'll use the system font, but I want to set it up as bold. And we're going to set the size as 50 points. And that's going to be too big on the iPhone 8, but it's going to look good on the iPad, which is much wider. So I'm going to change the minimum or the auto shrink from fixed font size to minimum font size. And we'll set that at 17. Okay, so right now that label is taking the whole width of my stack view. Here's a little trick. I'm going to bring in a view. And I'm going to add a view to the left of the label. And I'm going to set a constraint for that view of the width being 25 units. So that now moves that label over 25. I don't want it to butt up against the right. I'm going to copy that view, paste another version of it, and just slip it down past the label, so the label sandwiched in between. And now I have a 25 unit um, margin on each side of that label. And since the label will automatically change the font size, it's going to look good on all the devices. Let's go to our stack view B, and here we want to add an image. So I'll bring an image view in. I'm going to set the image initially to be chords title. Oops. So there's the initial image that I want to have when we start up the app. I will set con some constraints of this. And this is going to be tied to stack view B all the way around. We'll just do 0, 0 and zero all the way around and add those constraints. I also want to set up the aspect ratio and these are all set up as squares just to make sure that this always looks good. And so my aspect ratio here should be one to one. All right, starting to take shape. Now we're going to go to stack view C. Stack view C, I'm going to bring in a little bit. I'm going to go to the constraints and set the equal width to 0.8. And then I'm going to introduce a button. We'll put the button in the stack view. I'm going to set up the background of that button to be chord button background. Just created that in, in uh, Photoshop. And I'll set the text to be A. I want to set the text color because the blue doesn't look very good on that dark background. We'll set the text color to a white. And let's make it bold. And I'm going to increase the font size up to 
and let's try 27. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm then going to select the button and add uh, some constraints here. I'm going to set the aspect ratio, and I'm also going to anchor it on the left to my stack view. You can do left, top, and bottom. I'm going to add four constraints. You think, see the things kind of jumped a little bit there. It's okay. We're going to come into we're going to take a look at the constraints for that button. And I'm going to change the aspect ratio to be 3 to 2. And in doing that, I probably want to get rid of one of the other constraints. I'm going to delete the bottom uh, tie. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to copy and paste that button three times. That's looking much better. I want to check my stack view, C, and let's make sure that distribution here is equal spacing. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to change the text of the second button to be AM for A minor. And the third button will be B7. Let's copy those three buttons. I'm going to go to stack D and paste those buttons into stack D. You notice they kind of they, they came outside of the stack, so I'm going to drag them in. And if you look at that line with a little circle at the end, I can make sure that they are indented under stack view D. Now stack view D, let's set that one up. Uh, we set the constraint up for the equal width earlier, change the proportional to be 0 0.8. So I'll make that change. Now they're conforming very nicely. And just check the properties. Right now we have fill and fill. I want to check this. I want to change this to equal spacing. And I'm going to change the alignment to center. Do the same thing up here on stack view C. Make sure the alignment is centered there. That's looking good. Let's just change our text here to C. The second button will be a D. And the third button in this row will be a D minor. So I'm going to go to stack view E and paste in those buttons again. They should still be on my clipboard. Let's make sure they're indented under stack view E. For the stack view, we want to set the width to be 0 0.8 multiplier. And again, I'll do center alignment and equal spacing. To be an E7, F, and G. And then once again, for stack view F, I'm going to paste. Bring these underneath the stack view. We'll set this stack view to have a proportional width of 0 0.8. And we'll change the properties again to be center alignment and an equal spacing for the distribution. And then my button on the left is going to be G7. The button on the right is going to say play. And I don't need a button in the center. I'm going to leave it there just because the spacing is so great. I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to select that button. We're going to delete the text. And then I'm going to get rid of the image. And so that button no longer comes into play. 
So that is our interface. I want to look to see how this looks on another device. So let's look at the iPhone SE. I'm going to shrink this down by double clicking the pasteboard. Let's go to the SE. Let's try the iPad Pro 12.9. And it looks pretty good on there as well. I might want to make some adjustments in terms of sizes for the buttons because it, they look a little bit big on the, on the iPad. Um, we can go in and tweak any of the constraints, any of the settings, um, and try to get to look better on the different devices. The one thing I do notice here is my label at the top is not centered. So I'm going to select that label. Let's go to the properties and let's make sure that it's centered. And that looks much better. The next step is going to be to code our app. So I'm going to go to the View controller Swift file. Get a little more room for our code. I'm going to paste in our comment headers that we created in Microsoft Word. I'll just organize our code a little bit better. I need an outlet for our image, so I'm going to control drag it to our IB outlet section. We'll name this uh, Chord Image. I'm going to make that connection. And then we're going to create an action for our first button of A. So I'm going to control drag it. This will be an action. We're going to do a UI button. And we'll name this um, show chord button. Now, if we look at our images in the navigation panel with the, the assets, we named the images chords underscore and then the letter. So we're going to use that information in determining what chord image we want to show because our buttons all have the letters of the chord. And so we can use sender to get the current title of that button. So let chord be a string. It's going to equal chords underscore. And we're going to concatenate Sender dot current title. And I can see that I need to unwrap that. And then we can say chord image dot image equals UI image and we're going to say the UI image is named chord. Let's just try this on the simulator and see if that works. We'll just do it for the letter A or the chord A. And there we see chord A. And the other buttons, of course, don't do anything at this point, but we're going to link those very easily. We're going to go back to our storyboard. And I'm going to grab the little circle in front of our code block, drag it to each of the other buttons. This will set up those buttons using the same piece of code for the touch up inside. And let's just test that.
and those now all work. So the next step is going to be to code in the audio, and we'll do that in the next video.